at rest? Yeah, or order arms in it. Order arms. Right. Everybody's already there, so this is like... We're gonna tighten the lane. I don't think we need to do No. Demonstration for you, and just talk about a few of the different uh, nationalities we have represented and their weapons. First off, we have our British contingent, and we'll let them tell a little bit about what they're dressed as and what they represent. The uniform we're wearing today is uh, exemplary of uh, both British infantry in the 1944 through the end of the war. It's a slightly more uh, economic model of the uniforms and weapons than you would have seen earlier in the war, minor alterations. The British battle dress, which is a uh, uh, long wool trouser uh, jacket, would have been worn through most of World War II. Uh, it was, a it was uh, adapted in the 1930s to do away with the uh, World War I service dress, which was more, more of a dressing uniform. It was very restrictive. The, uh, the uh, web gear was also adapted to meet the new needs. They introduced the Bren light machine gun. We have one over in our camp if you want to come take a look. But the uh, pouches on the front of the uniform is to carry two magazines. Every man in the section carried 30, two 30 round magazines to keep the Bren gun firing, as it was the only source of heavy covering fire because the main weapon was the Lee Enfield bolt action rifle, which was 10 rounds, high rate of fire for a bolt action, but at the end of the day, it's still a bolt action rifle and limited in that way. So the Bren was uh, very important for the squad to be able to advance, to provide covering fire and suppressing fire of their enemy. The uh, Mark II helmet was a slight variation on the World War I, uh, flat Brody helmet, but uh, was used through most of the war. They did go to something uh, called a turtle helmet later in the war. There was a uh, uh, slightly more coverage as this thing doesn't offer a whole lot of protection on the sides and back. Uh, the uh, uniform and equipment that you see on Rick here as he turns around is uh, on the back side. He's got his small pack which would have carried most of the soldiers. Uh, spare uniform parts, socks, ground cover, and his basic uh, amenities as well as his gas cape which while gas was never used in World War II it uh, was always a fear. So it's essentially a big poncho that would provide protection for the rest of your skin and then he would have a gas mask as well rolled up. And below that he has his entrenching tool, which is a small camp shovel type tool. While uh, every soldier was issued one, it was highly unpopular, so you see many soldiers throughout the British Army carrying full length handle shovels, uh, or vehicle level shovels, to actually dig with, because those were not a great tool. Uh, on his front he's got bandoliers to carry his rifle ammunition, as like I said, these are for the Bren gun, and possibly for any grenades or spare items he needs quick access to. At, uh, we would have been the Hampshire Regiment, which would have been part of uh, the main British Army and county regiments. Have that similar bond to uh, an infantry division uh, has with a National Guard uh, contingent. That both would have belonged to a county regiment. So you had one part abroad, one part at home. Questions? Uh, what battles did the Hampshire Regiment participate in? Uh, the first battalion that we're depicting was uh, in Egypt at the start of the war. Uh, served through the siege of Malta. Inva the amphibious invasion of Sicily and through the early parts of the Italy campaign and then eventually returned home to England before invading uh, at, uh, on, on D-Day, June 6, 1944 and continuing through the French and Belgian campaigns until eventually uh, being exhausted uh, through both aged uh, members and also depletion and sent home as a training battalion. Other parts of the Hampshire Regiment that were uh, raised later served through pretty much every campaign of the war except for the Pacific.